Today, we will concentrate on the algorithmic aspects of uh, HMM. Our uh, focus will be on uh, how we can actually use the hidden Markov model for the purpose of tagging a sequence, labeling a sequence, uh, doing uh, different kinds of machine learning ta tasks, which depend on probabilistic techniques. So, we continue with the discussion and uh, we have seen in the last class that the hidden Markov model is defined by a set of states S, where the number of states is equal to n, the output alphabet O, where the number of output alphabet is k, there are these transition probabilities A i j. The meaning of uh, A i j is the column, is the row column combination i and j. It is a table after all and uh, the value there indicates the next uh, state for a particular state. The emission probabilities are associated with the output symbols and the initial state probabilities are pi and the complete machine, machine is defined by the initial state probability, the output probability and the transition probability. Now, there are uh, two very important properties of Markov processes on which the theory of hidden Markov model rests. The first property is that of limited horizon. So, this says that uh, given a previous T states, a state i is independent of uh, preceding 0 to t minus k plus 1 states. This is expressed mathematically as follows. Uh, the tth state is equal to i conditioned on the fact that there have been these states x 0, x 1 up to x t minus 1. This is equal to the conditional probability x t equal to i given that uh, previous uh, k states are x t minus 1, x t minus 2 up to x t minus k. So, this shows that beyond uh, k states which uh, come before the tth state, we can ignore everything. So, this is the limited horizon or window property and uh, since uh, k states previous states determine a particular state, we call this Markov process order k Markov process. And this possibly is the most important property about the Markov process. The time invariance property, uh, we show it only for k equal to 1, says that uh, the dependence of uh, the tth state on uh, t minus 1 th state, that means the dependence of a particular state on the previous state is uh, same everywhere. That means, over the whole sequence, wherever we have uh, x t preceded by x t minus 1 the states being i and j, this uh, probability will not change from place to place over the sequence. Why is it called uh, time invariance? The, we should remember that hidden Markov model was inspired by uh, processing of speech signals and uh, online speech has an association of time with it. At every time instant, we sample a part of the speech signal and uh, that is some kind of a vestige of that uh, previous state of affairs in which hidden Markov model is discussed. Now, we are essentially concentrating on uh, sequences. These sequences may or may not be synchronized with time, but what is important is that there is a sequence and the time invariance essentially says that uh, this probability is position invariant. This conditional probability does not change from place to place over the sequence. So, the three basic problems given an HMM are the following. First problem is likelihood of a sequence. So, given a sequence output sequence, what is the probability of this sequence? So, there is a forward procedure for this and there is a backward procedure, which we will see very soon. Problem 2 is the best state sequence probability. This is the famous Viterbi algorithm which we uh, did last time. We will uh, mention this once again. And problem 3 is the re-estimation problem, where uh, the algorithm is called the Baum-Welsh or forward backward algorithm. So, here the problem is to uh, get the parameters of the HMM, which are nothing but the 
transition output probabilities. And uh, we know that for a, a order 1 Markov process, the transition and output probabilities can be combined and a probability can come on the arc of the machine. All right. So, these are the three problems and we will be concerned with how to solve these problems algorithmically. Now, uh, there is a term introduced uh, probabilistic inference. Here, the observation sequence O is given and the state sequence S is to be found out. So, given O, we need to find out S star, where S star is arg max P S O given O called the probabilistic inference. Now, we call this inference because we are inferring the hidden state sequence from the observed sequence. So, this is also called inference and we have another kind of inference coming from the domain of logic, predicate calculus and propositional calculus. So, here uh, we find that uh, the logical inference is based on the expressions, the logical expressions and their operators there and there are inference rules. So, let us write down some of the differences that exist between probabilistic inference and the logical inference. So, uh, as we write, we can see that uh, we are putting down probabilistic inference on one side and uh, logical inference on the other side. Probabilistic inference is first of all numerical, logical inference is symbolic. Okay. Here we work with numbers and here we work with expressions. Inference rule like modus ponens. Here the inference uh, rule is typically an arg max expression. We continue these differences probabilistic inference and logical inference. So, we have laws of probability, here we have laws of Boolean algebra, we have axioms of probability, here we have axioms of Hilbert for example, in uh, propositional calculus. Okay. Here soundness, consistency, completeness are important. Here on the other hand, no concept of soundness or completeness. So, this is the way uh, it goes, we distinguish between probabilistic inference and logical inference. So, we continue with the slides and uh, the probabilistic inference is to be done from arg max computation. Some very essential facts about hidden Markov model, which we uh, described last time, but we reiterate them in the form of a summary of points. So, Markov plus naive base is a very powerful idea, very frequently used in artificial intelligence, planning, machine learning, natural language processing and so on. The hidden Markov model uses both uh, transition and observation probability, which uh, when it is of order 1, k is equal to 1 and the probability of going from the state s k to s k plus 1 on symbol o k is uh, equal to actually p o k given s k into p s k plus 1 given s k. So, this notation is very elegant, very easy to be understood by human beings, but uh, its mathematical foundation is this that it is a product of two conditional probabilities o k given s k and s k plus 1 given s k. This whole thing you can see can be written as probability of o k comma s k plus 1 given s k. Okay. So, the conditioning variable is s k and the condition variable are 2 o k the output symbol and the uh, next state s k plus 1. So, this particular thing when the order is k equal to 1, this effectively makes hidden Markov model a finite state machine with probability.
the probability of the observation sequence p o you can uh, very easily see cannot be computed from the transition table and the observation table directly. Okay, this p o suppose you apply chain rule then the chain rule will give you p o 1 given o 2 p o 2 given o 1 p. So, it will be first p o 1 into p o 2 given p o 1 let me write it down for clarity. So, p o is equal to p o 0 into p o 0 given o 1 into p o 2 given o 1 o 0 into p o 3 given o 2 o 1 o 0 into p o 4 given o 3 o 2 o 1 o 0 and so on until p o k given o k minus 1 o k minus 2 up to o 0. All right. So, this uh, probability sequence which is found by the application of chain rule is not very useful because uh, no uh, probability table either transition or observation gives us these parameters they need to be computed some way. So, therefore, what is done as we see on the slide is that uh, P O is written as P O comma S summation over S that means, S is the introduced variable this process is called marginalization this is the margin variable S we uh, attach this with O and S can take all possible values we sum them up and this is equal to the probability expression shown here. Now, this is a very powerful operation from probability which is useful throughout machine learning AI NLP and so on namely the uh, process of marginalization. So, let us remember two things which I would again like to write in uh, NLP machine learning two probability laws which are very 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 useful are one chain rule which is p x 1 x 2 up to x k is nothing but p x 1 into p x 2 given x 1 into p x 3 given x 2 x 1 p x k given x k minus 1 x k minus 2 up to x 1. This is the first rule which is very important and the second rule is marginalization whereby we can say p a is equal to sigma p a comma b 1 b 2 up to b n and all b 1 b 2 up to b n take all possible values. Okay. So, these two rules are extremely important in machine learning natural language processing and we have to make use of them often times. All right. So, we proceed further now and uh, we continue with the ARN example which was discussed in the last class. So, if you remember we had three ARNs, ARN 1, ARN 2 and ARN 3 these are three containers and they have distribution of red, green and uh, green and blue balls within them. So, R 1 for example, contains 30 red, 50 green and 20 blue balls, R 2 contains 10 red, 40 green and 50 blue balls, R 3 contains 60 red, 10 green and 30 blue balls. So, this is the way the arms are uh, organized so to say with the balls inside them of different colors. And we know that the probability of going from one arm to another, one of the arms in the row to a, an arm in the column is given by these numbers. So, the probability of going from arm u 1 to arm u 2 is 0 0.1, from u 1 to u 2 is 0 0.4, u 1 to u 3 is 0 0.5. This is the way these probabilities are organized. Similarly, probability of going to u 1 from u 2 is 0.6, coming back to u 2 is 0.2, coming to u 3 is 0.2 and so on. This is a transition probability 
observation or output probabilities are functions of their states only. So, the probability of drawing, an, drawing a red ball from R 1 is 0 0.3, because 30 percent of the balls are red. That of drawing a green ball is 0 0.5, that of drawing a blue ball is 0 0.2. Now, suppose we have this observation sequence, we had a red ball followed by a, another red ball, green ball, green ball, blue ball, red ball, green ball and then again red ball. Now, our question is uh, what would be the uh, most probable ARN sequence which produce this and how do we know the best uh, possible ARN sequence in terms of probability? We have to compute it from the transition probability and the observation probability. All right. So, the diagrammatic representation for the transition table probabilities and observation probabilities is this u 1 can come back to u 1 with uh, 0.1 probability, this is a transition probability u 1 to u 2 is 0.4, okay. this is a transition probability u 2 to u 3 is 0 0.2 which is shown on the arc. Similarly, from u 1 obtaining the red ball has the probability is 0.3, obtaining a green ball has probability 0.5, obtaining a blue ball 0.2. So, these are observation probabilities from each state and the transition probabilities are between the states. Now, from our mathematical treatment last time, where we applied chain rule, applied Markov assumption, applied Bayes theorem, applying all these, we could group uh, terms together and we could see that we did not show the observation probabilities uh, anymore, rather we can observe, absorb them into the transition probabilities and uh, we see that uh, this u 1 to u 1 with red ball, green ball and blue ball have these probabilities. These probabilities are found by multiplying the transition probability from u 1 to u 1 and uh, the probability of a red ball coming from u 1 or a green ball coming from u 1. So, these probabilities are multiplied which is a consequence of Bayes theorem, Markov assumption and uh, chain rule and so on and uh, then uh, the whole probability of observation is absorbed is combined with transition probabilities to give this picture. We can see that this state uh, this transition diagram has only probabilities with respect to the observations uh, marked on the arcs. So, this is like a finite state machine and uh, has these probabilities marked on this. Actually, you can see that this particular situation of three values coming on an arc is actually equivalent to three arcs coming back to u 1. Okay? u 1 to u 1 on r, u 1 to u 1 on g, u 1 to u 1 on b. So, these are actually three arcs. Similarly, there are these three arcs for r, g and b and so on. So, we have got this uh, transition the got, got this probabilistic finite state machine, which is actually our hidden Markov model. Let us remember once again that it was possible to draw this machine because of the Markov assumption. Okay? The fact that any state depends only on the previous state. This uh, automaton cannot be drawn in the way shown if uh, the dependence of a state is on previous two states. Now, we have seen that this is our observation sequence R, R, G, G, B, R, G, R and the states are S 1, S 2, S 3 up to S 8, S i each S i can take either U 1 or U 2 or U 3 as the value, S is the state sequence, O is the observation sequence. Now, A star is the best possible ARN sequence. Now, the goal is to maximize P S given O, where S is the state sequence and O is the observation sequence. Now, the mathematical expression for this is S star equal to R max of P S given O where it varies over S. The Bayes theorem is applied on this and uh, P A given B is nothing but P A into P B given A into P B, where P A is prior, P B given A is likelihood and uh, our arg max uh, expression now becomes P S given O is equal to nothing but arg max of P S into P O given S. The state transition probability uh, can be used for simplifying this expression P s, computing P s. P s is P s 1 to 8, this is equal to P s 1 into P s 2 given S 1, P s 3 given S 2 S 1, P s 4 given S 3 S 2 S 1, P s 8 given S 7 to S 1. 
by Markov assumption where k is equal to 1, p s equal to p s 1 into p s 2 given s 1, p s 3 given s 2, p s 4 given s 3 up to p s 8 given s 7. So, the observation sequence probability can be found as p o given s is equal to p o 1 given s 1 to 8, p o 2 given o 1 and s 1 to 8, p o 3 given o 1 to o 2 given s 1 to 8, p o 8 given o 1 to o 7 and s 1 to s 8. Now, we assume that a ball is drawn independent of uh, any other draw or any arm that is not its own arm. So, P O given S can be written as P O 1 given S 1, P O 2 given S 2 up to P O 8 given S 8. So, P S given O can uh, finally, be written as P S 1 into P S 2 given S 1 up to P S 8 given S 7 multiplied by P O 1 given S 1 into P O 2 given S 2, P O 3 given S 3, P O 8 given S 8. Now, at this stage we introduce the states S 0 and S 9 as initial and final states respectively. So, S 0 is the initial state with an epsilon uh, output or input and S 9 is the final state. So, from S 0 the system goes to S 1 with the output of epsilon. So, we have here P S into P O given S as P O 0 given S 0 into P S 1 given S 0. P O 1 given S 1 into P S 2 given S 1, P O 2 given S 2 into P S 3 given S 2 and so on. So, this way we can arrange the terms and group them together and uh, after S 8 the next state is P S 9. So, P S 9 given S 8 is 1 therefore, we are not changing the equation at all and uh, P O naught given S naught also is fine because its value is always 1. And, uh, uh, P S naught is again 1. So, P S 1 given S naught also can be written. Now, after grouping of these terms and introducing this notation here, P O k given S k into P S k plus 1 given S k is P S k going to S k plus 1 with the symbol O k. So, here what happens is that the whole transition probability and observation probability all these are combined and the whole uh, observation sequence and state sequence can be looked upon as a finite state machine with states S 0 to S 9, S 0 to S 9 and uh, on each arc we have the symbols epsilon r, r, g, g, b r and g r. This is actually the observation sequence and our goal is to find out the best possible state sequence or the best possible um, arn sequence. So, now that we know that this finite state machine with probabilities is in place, we can make use of this uh, tree diagram okay, which expresses the famous Viterbi algorithm for the Arn problem. Here we show the tree only for the first two symbols, the tree gets further developed as more and more symbols come in. So, we our first symbol is epsilon, second symbol is r, third symbol is another r, fourth symbol is g and so on. So, the tree will gradually grow. Now, as you can see on the tree from the initial state the three possibilities are u 1, u 2 and u 3. Similarly, from u 1 you have three states u 1, u 2 and u 3. From u 2, u 1, u 2, u 3 and from u 3 again u 1, u 2, u 3. So, if this is the way the tree is grown then let us see how much of calculation is required. Let us write it down on the paper and see how much of calculation we need. So, uh, from uh, S 0 we have u 0, u 1, u 2 epsilon symbol uh, from u 0 again u 1, u 2 uh, from u 1 you have u 1, u 2, u 3 from u 2 again u 1, u 2, u 3 from u 2 3 u 1 u 2 u 3. From here again 3 children u 1 u 2 u 3 and so on until at the last child we have again u 1 u 2 u 3. And uh, here the symbol was r another symbol is r here. So, if we grow the tree this way suppose the sequence length the observation sequence length 
is uh, now 9 in our case. Okay. This is epsilon plus r r g r so on 9. So, after epsilon we have one level, after r we have second level and uh, after third we have the third level. So, at each level we multiply the number of nodes in the previous level by 3. Okay. So, first level uh, at the 0th level we have only one uh, node S 0. At the first level you have 3, so 3 to the power 0, 3 to the power 1, here you have 3 to the power 2, here you have 3 to the power 3. So, after the final symbol we will have 3 to the power 9 nodes at the leaf, 3 to the power 9 nodes at the leaf. So, uh, we can say that uh, complexity without any restriction is equal to the number of states to the power length of observation sequence. Okay. So, number of states to the power length of observation sequence. So, states to the power observation sequence length. So, this is a an enormous complexity exponential in the length of input in input length in absence of the Markov assumption and Viterbi. -E. However, we see on the slide that this will not be the case. This is the main point of the Viterbi -E algorithm. Because of the Markov assumption, any state will depend only on the previous state. Okay. So, now we the start with S 0, go to U 1, then go to U 1. So, this sequence is U 1 U 1 and the probability here is 0 0.03 into 0 0.5, which is 0 0.015. The probability at this leaf is 0 0.5 into 0 0.08, which is 0 0.04. At this leaf, the probability is 0 0.5 into 0 0.15, which is 0 0.075. Here, the sequence is U 2 U 1 and the probability is 0 0.06 into 0 0.3, which is 0 0.018 and so on. So, we compute the probabilities of the sequences by uh, multiplying the probabilities which are obtained here. Now, these probabilities where do they come from? These probabilities actually are uh, given by our transition table. This, this probability u 1 to u 1 on r, we have already seen it in one of the previous uh, slides, which is this slide, you see. So, u 1 to u 1 on r is 0 0.03. Okay. Similarly, u 1 to u 2 on green is 0 0.24. So, we have recorded all these in the Viterbi tree, in the Viterbi tree. So, r is a symbol here and everything has to be with respect to r. So, u 1 to u 2 on r is 0 0.08. So, these things are recorded here. Now, uh, why is it we can multiply these uh, probabilities? Okay. We, how can we multiply these probabilities? So, let us look at the uh, mathematics for this. So, if I take a part of the tree S 0 and we have u 1 again u 1 and this is on epsilon 0 0.5 and on r 0 0.03. This probability of u 1 u 1, which is the probability recorded here 0 0.015, we are saying is nothing but 0 0.5 into 0 0.03, which is 0 0.015. So, the question is why? Why can't we multiply these probabilities? The reason is that what is the quantity measured here? The quantity which is measured here is P u 1 u 1, okay. P u 1 u 1 sequence on r, on epsilon r, okay, on epsilon r. Or in other words, this probability, this probability, this particular probability is nothing but probability of u 1 u 1, the state sequence u 1 u 1 given epsilon r, okay, given epsilon r. So, this is uh, nothing but 
the probability of u 1 u 1 it should be s 0 u 1 u 1. This is nothing but probability of epsilon given s 0 into probability of u 1 given s 0 probability of s 0 into probability of r given u 1 into probability of u 1 given u 1 okay, by applying Markov assumption Bayes theorem etcetera and that is why this probability comes out to be the product of the probabilities on these arcs. So, we are correct in multiplying these probability values. So, proceeding further as we look at the slides, now we do the most important step in the Viterbi algorithm. We notice where, which are the sequences which end in u 1. Here is a sequence which ends in u 1, this is a 0 u 1 u 1 and this is a 0 u 2 u 1 and a 0 u 3 u 1. Now, we take all these three sequences and find out which probability is the highest okay, amongst all those sequences which end in u 1. So, this probability is 0 0.015, this is 0 0.018, this is 0 0.036. So, all those sequences which end in u 1 amongst them this is the winner sequence. Okay. So, the sequence u 3 u 1 has the highest probability amongst all those sequences which end in u 1. So, what we will do is that we will cancel out this particular node and this particular node, because later also when we introduce their children, the child of u 1 here will be u 1 u 2 u 3, here again it will be u 1 u 2 u 3 and here again it will be u 1 u 2 u 3. Now, you see everywhere we will be multiplying the probability of u 1 given u 1 or probability of u 2 given u 1 or probability of u 3 given u 1. So, the same quantity will be multiplied to these subsequence probabilities and these uh, sequences will never be able to overcome the values obtained from under the subtree here. Okay. So, everything that is in the subtree of u 1 here and u 1 here will always be less than the strings uh, produced under u 1 here. Okay. Therefore, there is no point advancing these nodes, because they will never be the winner sequences. Therefore, we will only survive the node here. Similarly, out of all those nodes which all the sequences which end in u 2 will survive only this node, others have no chance of winning later and uh, for u 3 this will be the surviving node, because this u 3 and this u 3 here their probability values are less. Okay. So, out of these n nodes only 3 will survive and we retain we only develop those 3. So, the 3 nodes here are this one, this and this one. So, again they will be advanced and they will produce 9 nodes. Again we will pick up those sequences which end in a particular uh, state u 1, u 2 or u 3 and only survive them. So, at every stage we keep only 3 nodes for further development and therefore, at the end of the observation sequence we will have only 3 nodes at the leaf level. Okay. Prior to that we had 3 nodes again, prior to that again 3. So, the total number of nodes in this 3 will be 3 into 8. So, what we find here is that we have a tremendous amount of complexity saving because of Viterbi complexity comes down from s to the power o to s into o. Okay. So, from exponential to linear and the reason why this happens, the reason for complexity degradation reason for complexity reduction is Viterbi, which is based on dynamic programming and the key element is the Markov assumption. Because of Markov assumption what happens is that a state depends only on the previous state and in a sequence we find that only those 
uh, only those sequences which end in a particular state uh, amongst them only one of them needs to be retained only one of them needs to be retained. Okay. So, this is a very important idea in artificial intelligence statistical natural language processing Viterbi algorithm is an old algorithm independently discovered in the 60s, 70s in many different branches of electrical engineering and even economics. And what we find is that uh, this also has application in statistical natural language processing. Now, we will see that uh, this Viterbi algorithm can be implemented quite elegantly by making use of uh, some important data structures. So, the same theory works when we have a Markov process of order greater than 1, say the order is 2. The uh, observation sequence remains the same epsilon r, r, g, g, b, r, g, r, which we call O0, O1, O2 up to O8, and the state sequence is S0, S1, S2, S3 up to S8. A final state S9 is introduced to signify a termination. And again, we can do this uh, application of Bayes theorem and grouping of terms. So, P s into P o given s is P o naught given s naught into P s 1 given s naught into P 1 o 1 given s 1 into P s 2 given s 1 s naught P o 2 in given s 2 into P s 3 given s 2 s 1 into P O 3 given S 3 into P S 4 given S 3 S 2. So, see how the conditioning part now involves two states instead of only one state and O naught is nothing but the epsilon transition uh, P O naught given S naught will be 1, P S 9 given S 8 and S 7 will be equal to 1, P S naught given P S 1 given S naught is the initial probability. All right. So, this is the Markov process of order 1 and uh, of order greater than 1 and the adjustments which are made to the basic theory are the following. The transition probability table will have tuples on the rows and states on columns. Okay. Now, since uh, every uh, state depends on previous two states, our transition table will not have u 1, u 2, u 3 on the row and columns u 1, u 2, u 3. On Instead, it will have u 1, u 2, u 3 on the column signifying the next state, but the rows would be tuples u 1, u 2, u 1, u 2, u 2, u 3, u 3, u 1 and so on. So, the transition probability table will have tuples on rows and states on columns. So, if it is a Markov process of order k, the tuples will be k tuples on the rows. Output probability table, however, will remain the same because the output observation probability depends only on the state of itself. In the Viterbi tree, the Markov process will take effect from the third input symbol, symbol after epsilon r r. Okay. Before that, we will not be able to eliminate any of the nodes. After these three symbols epsilon r r, there will be 27 leaves out of which only 9 will remain. Sequences ending in same tuples will be uh, compared. Okay. Uh, why only no 9 out of 27 leaves will survive? Because sequences ending in same tuples will be compared. Instead of u 1, u 2 and u 3, we will have to compare sequences which end in u 1, u 1, all those sequences which end in u 1, u 1. So, there will be 3 such uh, sequences. Similarly, all those sequences which end in u 1, u 2 and the one with the highest probability will be uh, retained. Then the uh, uh, such tuple is u 1 u 3, we will look at all those sequences which end in u 1 u 3 and only the sequence with the highest probability will be retained and this is the way it will go. Finally, there will be 9 nodes out of 27 which will survive and these 9 will be again advanced giving rise to another 27 nodes. Again we will look at these ending tuples and retain 9 nodes out of them. So, when we do it this way, the complexity you can see will be uh, S square into length of the input symbol. Okay. So, the complexity will uh, increase as per the Markov process order which is k and k will be in the exponent of the states. Now, 
to illustrate the implementation of this Viterbi algorithm, we take a much simpler probabilistic finite state machine. We have two states S 1 and S 2 here and the two symbols are A 1 and A 2. The state S 1 goes to S 1 on symbol A 1 and the probability of that happening is 0 0.01. So, probability of S 1 to S 1 on symbol A 1 is 0 0.1 probability of S 1 to S 1 on symbol A 2 is 0 0.2, probability of S 1 to S 2 on symbol A 2 is 0 0.4, probability of S 1 to S 2 on symbol A 1 is 0 0.3. Okay. So, let us remember that these probability values are actually combination probabilities. These are product of observation probability given a state into transition probability of a state given the previous state. So, here the question is what is the most likely state sequence given the output sequence. Uh, the output sequence which is seen is epsilon a 1 a 2 a 2 a 1 a 2 once again epsilon a 1 a 2 and then again another a 1 a 2. Okay. The tree uh, did not fit in the last slide. So, two slides have been taken and uh, the observation sequence is epsilon a 1 a 2 a 1 a 2 or in other words just a 1 a 2 a 1 a 2. So, the start state is epsilon and the state uh, goes to S 1. S 2 is not the initial state. So, therefore, this transition probability is 0. So, we have 1.0 here. This happens on epsilon. Then from S 1 on symbol A 1, we go to state S 1 or S 2. The probability of S 1 to S 1 on the symbol A 1 is nothing but 0 0.1 and that from S 1 to S 2 on symbol A 1 is 0 0.3. After that, we have advanced S 1 and S 2 and uh, the probability of the subsequence S 1 S 1 is noted here which is 0 0.1. Here the probability of the subsequence S 1 S 1 is S 1 S 2 is 0 0.3. Now, when we advance the nodes here S 1 goes to S 1 S 1 goes to S 2 and the symbol here is A 2. The symbol here is A 2. Uh, and uh, out of these four nodes, which are the ones we retain. So, you can see this S 1 S 1, this sequence S 1 S 1 S 1 ends in S 1, this sequence S 1 S 2 S 1 ends in S 1, this is S 1 S 1 S 3 S 2, which ends in S 2, this ends in S 2. So, amongst those sequences ending in S 1, we retain this because this probability 0 0.09 is more than the other sequence probability 0 0.02. Similarly, here we retain S 2 here. These two nodes are discarded. They will not be expanded. Advancing the tree, we have S 1, S 2 probabilities are 0 0.09 and 0 0.06. We see another A 1. S 2 is advanced this way with S 1 and S 2. S 1 is advanced S 1 and S 2. The sequence probabilities are 0 0.009, 0 0.027, 0 0.012, 0 0.018. So, amongst uh, them, we retain again this node and this node because this uh, sequence probability is ending in S 1 is less than the sequence probability ending in S 1 here. Similarly, the sequence probability S 2 here is more than the probability sequence probability S 2 here. So, we have these two nodes no surviving. The final symbol is A 2 and when we advance these again, we get S 1, S 2, S 1, S 2 here and this becomes the winner node. When we follow it backward, then we get the sequence of states S 1, the final state, the previous final state is S 2, previous state is S 1, the state previous to that is S 1 and then another S 1. Okay. So, S 1, S 1, S 2, S 1, S 1, S 2 and then again another S 1 this is the best possible state sequence. So, this whole thing can be simulated by a tabular representation which is equivalent to the tree and this tabular representation is the data structure which is useful for implementing the Viterbi algorithm. This we will see in the next class.